how can we begin to farm in a way that doesn't degrade the landscape? How can we begin to farm in a way that actually enhances and invigorates and grows the landscape to be healthier to the act of farming? And we've absolutely found that if we have beds that are covered with a black landscape fabric and taken out of production or put into fallow or put into cover crop, they're not as healthy as the beds that we keep farming because the way we farm grows soil biology. It grows soil health, it grows soil carbon, it grows the ecology above ground and below ground. The science of soil was very hard for me to find online. I was doing a ton yeah. of research and going to actual um, source material and trying to figure out what the soil does need to be healthy. And it was really hard to find back then. There was one little um, EPA, I think it was, one EPA or USDA pamphlet that was two pages. Um, and that was it. That was mentioning what soil needs to be healthy. And since we started talking soil as well, it really, in the past seven years, past six years, it's really changed. And all of a sudden soil is a main topic but it was not 10 or 12 years ago when we started this. It was not at all a main topic. But also, uh, a lot of it came when you went to an international conference that was held here yeah. in California, but there weren't a lot of Americans there. <laughs> well, it was a lot of like three <laughs> that was on climate, Californians. Yeah, that was on climate change and agriculture. And that, you know, started right. to help you put some, together some of the pieces. And then you brought it back, it lit me on fire. I was, I was like, wow, you know, there's this like climate component. Well, that makes so much sense. Yeah. Um, this is what we need to do. Aspect. And so that was like another, um, uh, you know, sort of foundation block that was set underneath of us of, to yeah, us. this is what we need to do. Of course it makes sense. Right. Let's do it. Yeah. There were no working examples to model this farm after. Um, that was really the stunning part was how do we proceed in doing something that is beneficial for the soil and beneficial for the ecology and follows the latest science. And there was nothing else out there. And so it was really finding our own way, which is why we <clears throat> went through these stages of reducing tillage and changing over machinery and just keep changing and changing until we really were able to finally put the, the highest principles of scientific evidence and scientific approach to this into practice. And that's always been the hardest barrier is how to apply science into a economically viable model. And yeah, we did it. I would also say that there was, you know, as we were trying this out, you know, we did definitely get positive feedback. Like we'd be giving tours <laughs> and sometimes we'd have somebody, you know, way from the other side of agriculture who was open enough, um, you know, to come out here and be like, wow, I got a degree in soil science and everything you're saying actually fits with what I learned in my degree. But then I graduated and was told, forget all of that. Yeah because that's the science and this is reality, but you're yeah. actually telling me that you're, ta you're, you're doing what the science yep. says. And so, you know, that was exceptionally validating. Yeah, it was. Many instances like that. People realizing that what we're doing is actually applying the true, honest science. And it's not just ignoring the science for real world economic profit and gain in the short term. Right. So. And I also wouldn't say that, um, you know, we did have people that we drew on a little bit. We definitely drew on, um, you know, the, uh, a lot of, you know, organic agriculture, small scale, like in terms of maybe the more like what they were growing and like like the ideas of like CSA in terms of like having um, that community support. Farms. Yeah, but we then inspired for small intensive farming for sure. Yeah, and but also the how to do it was the, the big thing. Oh, absolutely. Um, I'm also thinking of John Jevons, um, who really talk, you know, and sort of coming from that French biointensive, like, hey, get more food in there. And so that was another piece that we came in with the soil health um, of like, you know, we, you want to grow as much as possible. You know, you don't want to leave the soil fallow. Um, you know, you don't want to let it rest, which actually a lot of our religions will tell us, oh, you know, you need to let the soil, you need, to, you know, you need to let it rest. And if you think about how us as humans have done agriculture for a very long time, you use the soil, um, use and abuse get the soil for years, what you need out of it. And so it does need rest. Absolutely. It's been a human undertaking of managing soil by farming an area for three to five years till you burn out the soil and then letting it rest for 15 to 25 years as you do the other three to five year parcels here yeah. and there till you finally come back around so this whole idea of letting land rest has been integral to human survival right but letting land rest 
is an indication of how we've abused it in order for it to need that rest. It needs rest from human involvement because we're degrading it. So rest so really means we... letting Mother Nature regenerate that soil again until we can use it again. But when you have land values like we do today, and especially here in California and in the wine country of Sonoma County, California, with these land values, we cannot let land rest. So how can we begin to farm in a way that doesn't degrade the landscape? How can we begin to farm in a way that actually enhances and invigorates and grows the landscape to be healthier through the act of farming? And we've absolutely found that if we have beds that are covered with a black landscape fabric and taken out of production or put into fallow or put into cover crop, they're not as healthy as the beds that we keep farming because the way we farm grows soil biology, it grows soil health, it grows soil carbon, it grows the ecology above ground and below ground well, we, we farm. We know that, you know, the number one food, probably the only food of the soil biology is green photosynthesizing plants and the exudates, exudates that they put, put in there. Yep. And so we need to have as many of those as possible. Um, and so although we have an artificial system where we're putting in a kale crop and then we're putting in a tomato crop with lettuce crops and leek crops on the side, and then after that will come, you know, maybe another brassica crop followed by maybe a bok choy or something like that. Although we, it's an artificial system, like each of those crops is bringing something else. And when we're not letting them get to the point where the, the crop itself is mostly dead and old and weak, and there's a lot of weeds in there and exposed soil, like that's where the problem is. Like that plant is healthy and vibrant and producing and producing and producing, and it's just about done, but you know, being done, get it out there, you know, cut it off at the soil level, be, let everything be in the bottom, take everything from the top, compost it or create, you know, mulch on the bed with it, and then get a new, you know, healthy, young plant in there so that the biology from the former plant is able to then work immediately with that next plant. And that next plant just continues the cycle of photosynthesizing and feeding that biology and creating the, continuing those relationships. Always keeping green living plants on the ground, always photosynthesized, always exude, um, exudates from the roots to feed the soil biology. That's absolutely, absolutely. critical. And by having those green living plants covering and protecting the soil to feed the biology, they're also covering and protecting the soil, which means they're keeping all the exposure off the soil. So the soil isn't exposed to sun and wind, which volatilizes nutrients up in the atmosphere, creating more greenhouse gas emissions and reducing overall soil health. So keep those green living plants in the soil, protect it, cover it, keep the exposure off of there and feed that soil. It's absolutely critical. Soil is the linchpin to life, to civilization, to health. If we want a healthy future, to fight environmental collapse, to live regeneratively and ethically, and to experience a life of abundance and freedom, we want healthy and abundant soil everywhere. But that means we need to relearn old ways and learn some new ways to build, cycle, and partner with soil and soil life. We can change the world radically, but it's up to us. We have to make those choices. We have to partner with soil and soil life. It takes our participation and support. Will you join us? Regenerative Soil, the full program, we're going to dive deep we're going to be looking commercial, we're going to be looking DIY, we're going to be going garden, we're going to be going farm scale. We're going to cover it all. We want to serve everyone at all levels and we want to create that fluency, micro to macro, so that we can spread the regeneration of our soil, our ecosystems, all our systems, all across the world. You can do this. You can regenerate soil because regenerative soil is the linchpin for life. It's the linchpin for all systems, all of our civilization. Everything is running on this. Everything is based on this. Everything is relying upon this. Check out the link down below. Sign up and, and join us in regenerative soil, the full online course. You're not going to want to miss it. I'm Matt Powers, grow abundantly, learn daily, and live regeneratively.